Well, hello everyone. How is it going? So today the news dropped that Mercedes is leaving DTM. And I thought it would be a good time to go back and revisit the golden era of DTM. This is the DTM 92 pack and we're gonna race it on the Nordschleife. As you can see I'm driving the Mercedes E190 Evo. This is Roland Ash Ash's car. Beautiful livery, Diebels, beer livery. And AI is set to 107% I think. We're gonna do two races. Hello Maridan, it's me again. <laughs> We're gonna two. We're gonna do two races. The second race is gonna be a reverse grid. I hope the sound is okay, and you can hear me fine. The race time is 30 minutes, which means four laps probably I think and for the f for the fun of it I've added a mandatory pit stop as well oops been driving modern cars for too long need to get used to those historic cars again. We're gonna skip quali again, so we're gonna start last as always. Let's see if we can uh, get some overtaking done. Hopefully not be involved in any crashes. So yeah, DTM, uh, Mercedes is quitting DTM after 2018, which leaves the series in quite a bit of a jeopardy. Nobody knows how they will continue after that with only two manufacturers. I don't think that is an option. Rumor has it that they want to adopt the Super GT regulations and merge with the Asian uh, Super GT series, which could mean potentially um, Asian manufacturers like Honda and maybe Toyota and Nissan. But who knows, we will see what the future brings for DTM. But today we're gonna celebrate the golden era of the 90s. And what better track than doing that than the Nordschleife? I don't think DTM will continue to, to exist in its current form if there's only two manufacturers involved. I think they agreed that they want to have at least three of them. And it's not even said that Audi and uh, BMW will not also drop their 
considering it. I think that's a very likely scenario that they will leave as well. Unless something drastically changes. I did see the new Indy cars. That look pretty good, I have to say. But it's the it's the oval uh, specs, isn't it? Not sure how the road version will look like. Probably similar with a couple of additional aero pieces. But yeah, it looks pretty slick. So as you can see, this is the 24-hour version of the track. As you can see by all the tents and spectator structures next to the track. That is the version that they used to drive in 92. It was the support race of the 24-hour race back then. Which now is the WDCC. In 2000, since 2000. 16 I believe or was it 15 many always said that the DTM should have gone to the Nordschleife but obviously those cars were too quick I think for the track so that was not really an option but it would certainly be an interesting thing to do again in the future if DTM was to restructure running different kinds of cars that are less silhouette, less formula cars but more towing cars but then of course you have to see the TCR series has become a major player as well as the GT4 championship is growing a lot so it's really anyone's guess where DTM could fit in in the future. DTM does stand for German Touring Car Championship. Now the cars that we had in the past years, they don't have much in common with touring cars. Maybe they could create a similar uh, regulation than the Aussie V8 supercars. Those are very popular over there and not just in Australia. They are very popular worldwide. Um, maybe Maybe we, uh, well, the Formula US is using the, um, what is it, 2015, 2016 push to pass regulation, which was, I believe, 30 seconds per lap that you could use it, which is quite a lot. I don't know how much sense it would make to update it to, um, 2017 
uh, regulation since it's not really the, the same cars but maybe maybe it could be an option in the future yeah So this was our practice lap. I would say we are ready for race. <coughs> so 30 minutes should be 4 laps if my math is correct. Which uh, might be not, but we will find out. So I get 100 liters for 4 laps. I've increased the camber front and rear. I've made the dampers a little bit um, harder. I've decreased the ride height. And I softened the front roll bar. I think that's it. Oh yeah, I also moved the brake bias a little bit to the rear for less understeer corner entry and I've um, increased the final drive so I don't run out of gears. Alright, let's end this session and jump into the race. Starting from the last position, let's see where we end up. If I make it to P10, that will mean I have pole position for race 2, as we have a reverse grid. Got the Audis, Mustangs, BMWs, Mercedes, and the Opel on the grid. My favorite livery, the green Tic Tac livery. <laughs> All right. Rolling start. So far so good. Lost the position to Bernd Schneider, Mr. DTM. Quite amazing to think that Bernd Schneider was already driving in 92 and he drove up until mid of the 2000s, 2005, 6, I don't remember actually.
Hello, I'm good, Coco, how are you? Careful not to miss my gears when age shifting. Audi is really quick on the straights. tight. BMW is putting pressure on me from behind. Point now. He is not messing around in his BMW. Oops. Too wide here. <coughs> Losing all the momentum up the hill. <laughs> wow, this is so close. is really quick quicker than usual at 107% window opens in three minutes but by then we will have already crossed stop finish line I think that means pit stop at the end of lap two bit of rubbing wheels Whoa.
really bunch together everyone which is exciting but also dangerous Hi Michael I don't know how the AI is so quick on the streets even now I'm catching up in the slipstream. to P16 in one lap. It will be difficult to get all the way up to the front, continuing like this. Don't like this corner. First corner in the 24 hour layout. Completely breaks the flow. One position, no, two positions away from pole for uh, race two. Well, the Mercedes is bit tail happy yeah but it's not so bad actually it's very manageable anyway Mustang ahead of us, also a very quick car on the streets. Oh. Man, the AI is super aggressive. <laughs> it's so important that you have the AI set up to match your strength, your skill as closely as possible otherwise they will just overtake very aggressively and of course if you break earlier than the AI that's not good because then there's a good chance that they will hit you in the rear Let's see if I can get a little bit of slipstream here no he's just blasting away Round the outside, round the outside, yes, no, side by side. But he's got the advantage on the acceleration. <laughs> but he almost lost it. But he kept it on the track.
we're much quicker through the corners. But this is not a track where you can easily overtake in a corner. Maybe now here on the brakes. Ah, it's too far away again. Oi! He was braking so early, man. Exhausting. Welcome back. Looks like it's gonna be three laps only after all. Now that we pit this lap. <laughs> Super aggressive AI. Had to break very hard here to not hit him. <laughs> Three wide. That was a little bit too much for the AI. And he came back and drove right into my car and he's still next to me. Dangerous. is defending hard. Oh no, that Audi is gonna overtake me. Get the slipstream. Only tire change. We should have enough fuel. This is a very good slipstream now. But as soon as I go out of the slipstream, I'm gonna lose speed again. But I managed to go around the outside. 
And he comes back. Oh, he's very slow through the corners. Oof, exhausting. Yeah, they're leaving for Formula E out of all the series. But that series apparently is really popular. Can't see where I'm going. P11 behind the Mustang. I started watching DTM when they came back racing in 2003. Back then with the TT and the Opel and the Mercedes it was Bernd Schneider and Laurent Aiello in the Opel delivering some pretty good racing back then I watched it ever since. Wow, that Mustang is quick on the straights. Not so much in the corners though. But if DTM runs TCR cars, then it's basically TCR, then it's not DTM. We already have a TCR Germany championship, which is hugely popular, by the way. There's like 40 cars on the grid. Very, very nice uh, series. Good racing. Maybe they could um, take the TCR cars and uh, pimp them a little bit. Like make a TCR Pro Championship with more horsepower. But then again, what people want is uh, cars closer to, to road cars. Or more touring cars. Something like BTCC, but BTCC is also, well, I guess a mix between TCR and WTCC, or what was known to as TC2 cars two years ago. P10 now, which means pole position for race 2. If I'm not mistaken.
Bernd Schneider is coming again from behind. But that Mustang breaks so early. It's very difficult to drive in a in a grid with so many different cars because they all behave differently. You have to judge them differently. Thank you. Mercedes behind me is braking very late and the Mustang ahead of me is braking very early. It's not a very good position to be in. Really surprised how quick the AI is in the straights though. Oof, contact. Not a good place to make contact. That was on the limit. So I wonder we, if we have another lap coming after this one or not. It will be close, I think. Actually, we might have another lap. Yeah, looks like. Maybe we can even get on the podium.
Well, we have so many new cars, you know, coming in. It's, it's difficult to go back to older cars and update them. And especially now we have a we have a new guy doing the physics. Alex Hutchins Hutchinson. agree that it wouldn't make sense to delay for example a Porsche release in order to update some older cars you know these things uh, have priorities I think you can fully understand that as well as the GT3 cars the new GT3 cars that are currently getting physics but who knows, there might be a time when uh, we have a gap and we can work on the older cars again. at Sector 3 Studios, yes, working on race room. The 650 and the M6, um, they have a new physics, but they have been uh, made with a balance of performance in mind to to stay uh, competitive with the older GT3 cars. So they are not entirely new physics, or uh, let's say not entirely not entirely new philosophy of physics. Because obviously they have to be competitive within their class. But as soon as we have released uh, all the GT3 cars that we want to release in the near future, there's a good chance that all of them get an update. But it doesn't make sense to release one or two new cars with a new physics set that then is not competitive with the current cars probably makes more sense to update them all at the same time once they're all released but of course that will be a quite a time intensive process because there's so many cars in the class I think we have like 12 or 13 GT3 cars currently out there and uh, a few more coming into the class soon. So as you can imagine, updating all of them at the same time will, will take a little bit of time. <coughs> Whoa, this is getting scary again here. Oh, I knew it! He, was, he hit me in the back. The 
well. We're back on P10. Pole position for race two. Try to take that gap, but was not big enough. Schneider getting uh, racy again behind me. No, nope, no news about the night transition. It's uh, most likely that we will see that if and when we make the switch to Unreal Engine 4. Uh, because that is the plan anyway, to use the new tech that is currently developed by Simbin for GTR 3. So Race Room will eventually make that switch to UE4. And, uh, so it wouldn't really make sense to work on a on our own tech for day and night if we know that Unreal Unreal Engine has already built that in. So yeah, it will come when we switch to that tech. Exciting race! Whoa, really exhausting. I'm sweating again. So yeah, I'll take a two minute break, drink a little bit of water, and then we'll be back for race two. Thanks Heidi for subscribing. I'll be right back guys.
and I'm back. So race two, we finished seventh or somewhere around that, which means second row, third row, second row. Stay in that position. Another 30 minutes, another mandatory pit stop. Let's do this. Oh, I'm starting ninth. Okay. So the reverse grid is actually reversing the entire grid. Gearbox. Getting a little bump from the Audi, thank you. I think I'm carrying a little bit too much fuel. Yes, sure gamer, you definitely need a wheel. It's much more fun than with a controller. Making a lot of time in the corners, but always losing on the straights.
Any of you guys uh, getting Forza 7 when it comes out? I've seen some uh, car lists being published today. There's a lot of nice cars in that game. I wonder if it's driving any good at all. But it's pretty cool that they release it on PC as well. It is coming out for PC, isn't it? Yeah. I know that Forza 6 Apex, or whatever it's called, is available on, on PC. But it's only like a small demo, I think. So I didn't really bother with that one. But maybe Forza 7 could be an interesting option to try out. Certainly does look very good. Probably doesn't drive as good. is struggling with that corner. Ice cover, I think it's called. Oh no, oh no. Oh no! Ah! Crazy AI. Back to 90 it is. quick on the straights, the AI. Yeah, I would have never bought a console just to play Forza, but since it's coming out for PC, I'm curious how it is. When is it coming out? Should be fairly soon, I think. is breaking very late. Hi, this is an uh, offline race, single player.
Yep, this is AI. Well, you know, the Audi is a four wheel driven car. requires its own unique driving style. That maybe doesn't do the AI much favors. But I think they're doing quite okay job. It's just that the cars are so different in this class. The Audi is really quick on the straights but um, needs to brake much earlier. And um, the BMW, for example, can break much later. So it's also very difficult for me as a player to always judge it correctly. Okay, October. Well, that's not too far away. I can make an adjustment. Whoa! Stupid. I can make an adjustment to the sound if you don't hear me well. Just let me know. Oh, for fuck's sake. I thought I could stay on the outside there. But he gave me a little nudge, and that was enough to send me flying. Almost lost it. Well, let's see if I can still make it on the podium. Should be possible. I managed to stay on the track. Can't overtake into the carousel. That's not a good idea.
and see how the Audis are losing through the more twisted sections. Holding everybody up here. Beautiful section this one. Stefan Bell of S. Hi Alex. Time for pit stop. And then we have two more laps. I'm currently not racing in any online uh, league, but I'm uh, always open to enter any fun events or community races. Actually, tomorrow I might join in the virtualracing.org WTCC fun event. On Portimao, I believe. So, make sure if you haven't yet to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss the next race. Almost missed the pit stop. <laughs> Alright, back on B4, podium inside. Yeah, Portimao is quite fun. I don't drive it too often. Make no mistakes now in the next two laps. We should definitely be able to get on the podium, maybe even win the race. But cannot afford any mistakes anymore.
starting to hear my gearbox making noises. Transmission noises. That's not a good sign. <laughs> that quick Audi man. Jesus. Yeah. Could take him on the brakes again. Now he's starting to flashing his lights on me. Oh no, this is dangerous. Oh. Boy, oh boy, so intense. I think we're aiming at the podium. Uh, best case scenario here. scary Two different lines. The AI is set to 100, 107%. Usually I'm driving against 110, 115, but these AI are really, really quick in this class, turns out. So 107 is the max I could race against. Wow! P6, need to push now. Yeah, my transmission slowly braking. need to be more careful when clutching. Unfortunately, I'm slow I'm quicker in the and the AI only in places where you can't overtake. Can't overtake there on the outside. <laughs> Neither can you hear. Close racing is always good fun, but also very dangerous. 
It's an accident waiting to happen. Should get a pretty decent slipstream if he doesn't pull away too soon. I think I'm still still in slipstream range. Yeah. One more lap guys. Podium is possible. Rosberg ahead of us and now behind us but for how long? Must run into him. Trying to take as many positions on the Grand Prix circuit as possible. Because no Schleife you can't overtake. bring this win home. Why a Recaro seat? Why not? There's a link in the description if you want to see my entire simulator. Maybe that, once you see it, that will explain a few things. Fun fact, this Recaro seat uh, is actually stemming from uh, our old boss, Henry Cruz, who used to be a race driver in FIA GT.
That means this seat probably was mounted in a FIA GT Viper at some point. And now it's part of my simulator. gonna be a fight till the bitter end here. Piro is also having another go, coming from behind. Don't punt me off. Ah! Well, that was my own mistake. Ah. So close. Oh, we still have a chance, guys. We still have a chance. a little bit too much air here. Oh. <laughs> I had to try this. It's all or nothing now. all come down to the last chicane. I know that the AI is a bit slow in that corner. So we might have a chance.
good top speed. P2, it's not bad. Klaus Ludwig, one. Hi, Geo. Always joining at the end of the stream. <laughs> well, that was fun. It was also exhausting. Super aggressive AI. <laughs> That's fun to race, but can also be a bit tricky. To judge where exactly the AI is breaking. Well, in any, any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, then make sure you subscribe so we don't you don't miss the next stream. And then I'll see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>